everyone, my name is Javi and I can draw and this week, well, we've seen legs, we've seen the torso, we've seen the hands, the head, the neck, we've seen the legs, we've seen the shoulders and now the only thing that we have left to see in the human body is the arms. So let's go! So let's do this just a bit quick. If you're new to this, what I usually do when I start my week is I go and research the best tutorials that I can find that can help me on my week's mission. All the links are going to be below and these are the best tutorials that I found. They're not the best, but they're there. Now, the first one is actually the one that is really good. This one is by Nemonova. I know that every time in the videos that has to do with something about anatomy, I end up doing things uh, like mentioning Nemonova, but it's because it's, they're, they're so good and it just works with the basic shapes and the basic muscle groups of the arm and it's just so useful and well explained. So why not recommend it once again, this tutorial with the arms by Nemonova. Now, that is just for the basic part. Now, the second thing that I have to recommend is actually, uh, well, it's more like a tip on to how to approach is blocking the arm. This is by a Facebook group that is called Anatomy Next. They have this sort of book or app or something that is called Anatomy for Sculptors. And I mean, look at this image. What they're showing is how to interpret the arm as if it were a chain. And it's just so simple, but it helps so much when trying to understand how the arm works. I just, oh, I love it. I find it is fantastic. And then the other things that I found, they're not really tutorials, but are just these two images that I can even find the author for those. And one of them explains how the forearm connects to the arm. This is the forearm, this is the arm, and it shows one muscle helps connect and how to interpret how they, those muscles work, like using some kind of strings or red lines. It's just one or two images, but it helped me a lot to understand something about those muscles. And the other one is actually explaining how the muscles and the bones help to move the wrist, because those are like, the, you know, when you do this, you're actually moving all of this. So that's what the tutorial was showing. Now they're not the, those two. They're not the best tutorials, and I want to explore that a lot because I actually went into this trying to find answers to how the muscles on the forearm and the wrist connect and move, and I didn't find the answers, the answers I was looking for. So that's what I'm going to do on the next video. So even though those tutorials are basic, there are a lot of things that I already knew about the arm. So first I decided to start showing you guys what to do with this part of the arm, how the triceps is formed and how the biceps is formed. And this is how you draw it. Okay, are you ready? I, what I'm going to focus on today is going to be on the arm. This is the forearm. I'm going to focus on the arm, especially, well, you know, the basic muscle groups that are the biceps and the triceps and also how it all connects to the chest and you know to the ribcage and the torso i'm not going to focus on the shoulders there are videos for the shoulders they are on this channel you should look for them because i always forget to link things on the video so i'm not going to say like click here because it's not going to be there but it's in the channel so if you want to learn how to draw shoulders i already covered it in other videos so let's focus on the rest of the arm now what i have here are just two very 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 simple uh, volumes for the arms. One is going to be looking front and the other one is going to be looking back so we can focus on the different muscles. So let's start, well this is going to be the frontal one, okay? So what you need to know about the biceps is that as the name says is bi, so it's two and it comes attached to the bone here and then it's just one big volume. It is actually divided into. It comes this way. This is like very basic, right? Like he, he, you know how this is. You've seen a lot of biceps in your young life. And I would do something like this for the rest of the arm. 
And here you will have the first. Here you will have the first of the tricep muscles. I'm going to draw some just like really, really quick shoulder. Here it would be like the pectoral muscle and the shoulder and like something like this. Well, that's a pretty crappy shoulder. Well, it doesn't really matter. And here on this part, you will have just one more muscle that I can't remember its name. And then you will have another part of the triceps coming from the back. Now, on this part, if you're going to do the back, well, let's just do a quick shoulder here just to get this right. And I, I kind of need to do this because, see, the, the, this part of the shoulder blade and, uh, and the shoulder, it is actually hiding behind the triceps. So if I'm going to do, like, if this is going to be the bone and it comes here, this is where the elbow is going to be. Now, what you have to do right now is draw something very similar to remember when you when we draw the legs well there's a leg video and we draw the calves it is actually it has the very very similar shape to the calves that means that it's going to be something that is shaped like this this is all going to be tendons and then it's going to be like this this muscles here lock behind the triceps and this one's from the top of the shoulder blade lock on top of it it's going to be like this and the name is triceps because there's three muscles that form this uh, muscle group and this one is going to be here on the side you know when you're looking at really muscular guys it is very easy to identify the biceps and it's really easy to identify the triceps and then when you look there's in the middle there's this one small muscle well that one is actually part of the triceps too so this is going to be a volume like this and when it's exaggerated when it's really muscular it is kind of like tilted like this You've seen that, right? So, well, what do they do? What they do is actually really simple. They're for doing this and this. The biceps contracts when it brings the arm towards the shoulder and the triceps is the one that, contra that contracts when you are actually opening your arm. So here what I have is like two very uh, simple, 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 simple poses. Or, uh, you know, just to make a quick example. So in the first case, if we're going to do the arm extended, well, the shoulder is going to be something like this. Da, da, da. And then in this case, this is going to be like really swollen because it's making, it is contracting to make, to pull all the way. Wait, this muscle is going to come here. I'm going to, the muscles of the forearm are going to be on another video. This is going to be like this, and the biceps muscle is going to be not contracted, but stretched like this. So this one is the one making all the force here. It is pulling the arm this way. And if we're going to do it the other way, it will be something like this. In this particular case, we're going to draw just a quick shoulder. And the tricep muscle is going to be stretched like this towards the elbow. Muscle is going to come here. And this baby right here is going to be contracted like this. It's going to be compressed. We still have all of this. See, if you compare here the triceps is making all the strength, all the force, and here is the bicep making all the force. This is why it is gets so swollen. And when you have to show what your arm strength is, you're usually asked to do this, so you can like pump the biceps muscle really hard. Now the last thing that I want to do in this video today, because I'm going to focus on some other video on the other parts of the arm is actually to show you how it connects 
to the ribcage and the torso. Now, if we have here, like here we have the pectoral muscle and here we will have the deltoid, that is the, the shoulder muscle. Here, na na na, all of this comes like this. Now, the first thing that you will have here on top would be the biceps. You will have it here, well, let's just say that the arm is expanded, so you have this mass here. Then what you will have is just this tiny muscle that is between the biceps and the triceps that I don't have a really good clue of what it does, but it's there. You're only going to draw it when you're drawing this, anyway. Then, here it gets a little bit more complicated, because as I, as I showed you in when I was doing uh, this, there is this muscle here that comes from the back and goes towards the front. This is the muscle that helps you do this. Now, so if we're going to draw... There it is. So if we have to draw the triceps first, we have to take into consideration that this is going to come this way. First, there's going to be a muscle coming here. And then, well, here you will have also the dorsal muscle that is going to come like this way. But we don't really care about that, not in this video. So here you will have another muscle that joins here. And right then, after doing this muscle and this muscle, you can actually start doing the triceps. So here you will have, I don't know, an elbow, something like this. The arm will come this way up. It is a really disproportionate arm for the size of the chest that I'm making, but don't focus on that, focus on the arm, focus on the armpit. So yeah, how to draw armpits. You didn't know you needed that, did you? So, if we're going to do some quick volumes here, it's going to be like this, like this, like this. Sarara, sarara, and sarara. This is sarara like this, and this is sarareira like that. Now, this is the part that I found just a bit challenging. You see, in, when you're looking at your forearm, you know, of course, that there's a lot of muscles that move the fingers and, you know, the wrist and all of that, but there's just this big muscle here that I have no idea what it's like. So, I decided to figure it out, and I actually did it, and this is how you do it. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the first few most important things, in my opinion, about the forearm. And that is that the only thing that the forearm does, because it doesn't move by itself, everything that the forearm does is do this, and this is moved by the muscles in the arm, is actually move the wrists and move the fingers. Every muscle that is uh, that moves the fingers and the wrists and twist it, that is the most important part, are all in the forearm. And that's what we're going to see right now. So what I have here are three very, very, very sketchy arms in different wrist positions. Now, the most important thing about this is because, well, the forearm structure is made of two bones, one that it connects here, one that it connects here, and they both connect here in the elbow, and the thing is that they twist and move. So I did some quick sketch of the bones. So when your arm is relaxed, the bones here are, well, give me just a second. The bones here are a bit overlapped. When your arm is open, when you twist it like this, towards the outside, when you twist it like this, the bones are parallel. And when you twist it like this, the bones are super, super crossed when you do like this. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because there is one big, big muscle that helps here to do this movement. And it's a muscle that you have here. You have it in, well, very muscular arms, not mine. And that it, I always had trouble figuring out how that muscle works. Because 
the rest of the muscles on the finger are basically just really, really thin muscles that connect from this part to where the to the wrist and then all of this is tendon and that is kind of you kind of want to wing it well you, you can if you want to i'm not so concerned about it but i'm just concerned about one big muscle now this muscle is actually connected here to here it's actually connected to this bone and it comes like this it gets bulky here I'm going to draw very quick. I'm going to draw the bicep muscle here so you can have some notion or where every muscle is. Here's the triceps. And this muscle here is the important one. I'm going to get rid of the bones. See, this is the muscle that I'm talking about. Now, it has a very complicated name that I didn't take the time to learn. So for example, here in the relaxed arm, you have to come, if, you, well, if you're going to draw the bicep, that is kind of necessary, where here's the biceps, and then this muscle comes like this, and gets a bit wide here, and it connects like this. And in this particular case, because it's not doing any strength, because all the strength is doing it here to do this. Uh, the in this particular case with the arm stretched to the other side it is kind of like this you have the bicep here and it is just really really stretched so the more you bring it to this side the more stretch is going to be and the more you bring it to this side the more you twist your wrist this side the more compressed is going to be now as i was telling you for the rest of the muscles in the forearm there is a muscle that does the opposite for when you are having you have your arm like this and you want to bring it to this side is over here but it is so mixed up with all of the uh, muscles that have to do with the fingers that is not something that is not so prominent as this one that I'm showing you right now so for the rest of the arm what you have is just a lot of tiny muscles that uh, connect to the fingers and help them move. You see them a lot in motion, but you never see them no matter how muscular your arm is. If your arm is relaxed, you never see it. But if you start moving your fingers and you just touch this part of your arm, you can feel all of them moving, like compressing and stretching. The same thing here, you can see here the tendon. You should try it. Now, since we are focusing on this muscle that is in my opinion the most important one of the forearm I wanted to show it to you in a small uh, relaxed way because I realized that when you're stretching your arm that muscle since the arm is well blah, 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 I'm going to show you something first so this particular muscle that I'm showing you if I'm going to draw the bone it's going to be like this, the humerus is going to be something like this, and there's going to be like, well, the bones here, yada yada. The important thing is that this muscle is connected to this bone, it is attached like this. And it comes this way. So when you have your arm like hanging or stretched, that muscle is not is, is always a stretch. It's not in its most like comfortable position, so to speak. It's not in a relaxed position. The way that muscle is relaxed is when you have your arm like this. When you have your arm like this, just fold it in a 90 degree angle. It is when all the muscles of your arm are relaxed to the most. So in order to, have, if you're doing an arm like this, well, here it becomes just a little bit easier because what you have is muscles here like this then you have the bicep and then you have the rest of the triceps here and then for the rest of the arm here what you have are a few muscles for the fingers see and when you see that relaxed and you see all those lines going this way it kind of looks like pretty obvious or logical or like the 
that muscle makes sense because oh, most of the times it is in such a weird position I mean if you have it like if you have your arm like this this is going like this curve uh, we can draw that you have it like this if it's stretched it is like in another different position so for example I have it here yeah, at another angle what I wanted to show you was well if we're going to draw this like this is uh, this part of the hand so this is the shoulder if we're going to like the bone comes here we're going to draw some quick triceps here this is the elbow that since it's not stretched all of the stretchy skin comes here like this and then this particular muscle it is attached to this bone here and then it comes here and it is stretched and because the bone is here it has this curve that is really weird to identify where it comes because it is hard to figure out where the muscle comes and goes but if you look at this you realize that the only thing that you're looking at is like this part getting stretched so here in this particular case you would have something like this and then you will have all the muscles does it make sense to you because I'm like it is such a weird muscle because it is connected from this bone to this bone and it's all like for example if you have your arm like this it's not like usually bones are connected where they're not connected to to muscles that are not like in the same line but this is a muscle that starts when stretch it starts in a line and it ends on the same line if you're following it no if you're following it it makes a lot of sense because it comes attached to this bone and then goes all the way like this but when it's stretched it's a pretty weird muscle and you know what, I want to try to draw it on a folded arm that I didn't think about that. But if you're going to do a folded arm... I'm going to do this like super fast. Uh, more, more folded. Uh, Let's see, because I never tried actually to do this. arm comes here this looks weird already okay so I, I, I want to figure out like well you know shoulders going to be here the biceps is going to be here and this particular muscle we could consider is going to be like folding on itself or something like that Is it going to be like this? Should be something like this, right? I still need to figure it out. I'm doing it just now as I talk to you guys. It should be something like that. But I don't know. So it doesn't look that bad. Oh, what did I do? It doesn't look that bad. I think that mm, this one it's a little bit iffy, but it still makes sense if you think where the muscle gets is attached to and how it responds to certain movements and all of that. Because when you're drawing the forearm, that is the only prominent muscle that you have. You have to take into consideration where the bones. Uh, that connect the wrist to the elbow are going to be that are called the cubitus and the radius, I think? So finally, we know the basic volumes and structures of the arm. Now the only thing that we have left is actually know how to draw them in a way that it's useful to a pose and everything. So that's what I'm going to show you right now, just follow me. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I have here. What I have here is a torso with a head and a bit of the hip without any arms and I'm going to show you the first way that is the way that I usually use to draw arms when I had to. Now, for example, 
I'm going to try to do like someone, I don't know, he's pointing at something or something like that. Or no, you know what? He's going to put... Oh yeah, he's pointing at something. So I'm going to have to like bring the arm here. This is the perimuscular arm. And this is going to come like this. And if he's pointing at something, it's going to be like this. And this is a usual way for drawing the arm, just going progressively from the shoulder towards the hand, doing each of the volumes. Now, the thing about this that, you know, you can use it and it's, it's just a fine way of drawing arms is that, well, there is a problem that I always used to have and I'm going to use something as an example that I always used to make. Like when I didn't know what to do with a character and what they were doing with the arms, I always tried to put them like the hips, like in the superhero pose. And I always had this problem where I started with the shoulder and then I brought the arm back to where I supposed that the arm should be. And then when I had to draw the forearm, it's like, oh, I, I'm running a bit short. So I tried to stretch this and, you know, the end result is something that, you know, you, it's it's hideous. You don't like it. Is it your... Is, it's, it's unnatural, it doesn't look good, you know that it's not a natural pulse, that the hand shouldn't be there. So I started doing some research and there is another way that I started using recently that I like a lot better for not all cases, but most cases. And this is by drawing the hand first and then adapt the position of the arm depending on what the hand is doing. Why is this important? Because when you are drawing a character and the character is doing something, it's going to be moving the hands, and the hands is a focal point of an image. And, you know, it is important, you're going to be more concerned about what the hand is doing in an image than what the elbow is doing. But if the elbow is off, you're going to notice, and you're going to, if the hand is off, you're going to notice a lot more. So in order to keep the poses natural, drawing the hand first, is an actually great approach. So what I have here are just a few hand poses that I kind of drew. You know, you have to keep them between range. You're not going to draw a hand like a thousand miles away because it's never going to look good. You have to keep them, you know, relatively in range. So for example, in the example I just showed you before, I just drew the hand first. So here I'm going to bring the shoulder back a little. And, you know, you just do this thing or you just do like the short wireframe, bring it back and suddenly it looks a lot better, especially because now you have the hand in the pose that it should be. It's an awful hand, the one I drew, I was throwing it really fast, but still the position of the arm is a lot more natural than what I was doing before that was like this and it doesn't really work. So we have that one, for example. Here we have another one that is going to be like bringing the arm, like the shoulder would be a little bit forward. Actually drawing the hand first helps you a lot to position where the shoulder should be, depending on where the hand is going to be. So you bring this forward. And you have this. So now you can have this too. So the arm is going to be a little bit flexed. You don't have to work a bit on this particular muscle. Remember the one we saw on the other video. So this helps a lot, doesn't it? So I'm going to do the other two remaining just really fast. You know, the pointing one that I showed before is also going to be going forward, kind of like this. It really helps with the shape of the shoulder to do this, to draw the hands first. I'm realizing that as I do it now. It doesn't look that good, does it? Well, there's still some corrections to be made. Let me see. This is because I'm rushing. I shouldn't rush. Paying the consequences of trying to do this video fast. Okay, that's one. And finally, 
Also, I have to be honest with you, for some reason the camera stopped recording at some point when I was doing the video, so this is take two, so maybe that's why I'm rushing. It doesn't matter. And this one is like, well, it's a relatively relaxed arm. So the shoulder is going to be going back as well. Here is going to be this. And then there's going to be this shape. So there you have it. So for me, if you ask me, I would rather in most cases just draw the hand first and then draw the arms. It helps a lot to make the what the arm is doing look natural because when you are actually moving your arms, you're actually thinking where your hands want to be and know where your arms want to be. And when you are drawing, you have to do pretty much the same. So, Ah, and that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, if you like it, leave us a comment. Leave us, leave me a comment. If there's anything in particular that you want to learn that I can help you with, subscribe if you want to see more of this. There are new videos Monday to Friday. That's a lot of learning to do. And also, since um, this week is the last one where I see parts of the human body, next week I'm going to start doing something new. I'm going to start practicing for shortening. Everything I find, I will share it on this channel, on this video, so make sure to watch it. That's it for today. My name is Javier, I can draw, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!